Hello, my friends. I'm here to give you a quick rundown on how to use Gmail. So, what is Gmail? Gmail is your email. We just call it Gmail because it's a Google email. And if you've never used email before, it's like being able to write letters and notes to people that you know, but digital. So, there are some things to note about our school Gmail. First of all, you as a student can only send and receive emails within our domain. So what that means is, is you can't send an email to your mom or dad unless they work in the school district. You can send them to your friends, but if you have a friend that goes to Cortland or Dryden, you can't send them an email, unfortunately. Just so you're aware, everything you write can be checked by school administrators, the IT people. Um, we can go in and look at them and they can also be checked even if they're deleted. So I just wanted to put that out there. You never want to share anything that um, could get you in trouble. So keep your Chromebooks closed at this point. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. So the anatomy of your inbox. If you don't know what an anatomy is, that just means the structure or parts of your inbox, all right? So let's look at it. You see number one there, those three lines, that hides or shows the menu. Number two is up at the top. That's how you search through your emails. Number three, that button that says compose, that's how you start writing an email. Number four is your menu, goes along the left side. And five is all of your received mail. So looking at each piece, you can see you can hide or show the menu. You wouldn't believe how many people will call me and say, oh, the menu's gone, when really they've just clicked on those three lines and they didn't realize it hides the menu. The next thing is, is searching in emails. So right now you probably don't have a ton, or if you do, they're probably Google Classroom emails, and we'll get to that in a minute. But once you start getting a lot of emails, you may want to search for a specific email from a specific time. When you click on those three lines in the top right corner, you can search for emails from certain people. You can search for emails that you wrote to someone. Um, you can search for emails that just has these certain words in it, right? New time, date, if it has an attachment, what type of attachment. So there are definitely ways you can use your search function to help you in the future. Um, to create an email, you're going to click on that little compose button and a new message box will pop up. So looking at the menu, you can see there's lots of different options for emails. Um, you can snooze them, which means you kind of like hide them and then they come back up later. You can search through emails that you've sent your draft emails, maybe you started an email and then never finished it, would be in there. And finally, um, the spam you don't really have to worry about because we have a really great spam filter in our school and most of it probably gets caught in there. You can check your trash as well. Now, in your received email, if you're a younger student or you've never really played around with your email before, it probably looks something like this and it's filled with Google Classroom emails, right? So we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? So let's check it out. It's time to open your Chromebooks, if you haven't already, and get to your Gmail. If you don't know how to get to your Gmail, you can either open a new tab, like you see right above here, and click on the Gmail link on your main page. Or you can get to your Google Waffle and click on Gmail there. So let's talk about these Google Classroom emails. Everybody has them. They're in there unless you've turned them off. And I'm going to show you a little bit on how to do it. <clears throat> First thing you can do is you can select all by clicking that little box up at the top. And you can just get rid of them all. You can just delete them, OK? We're starting fresh. If you don't want to delete them all, you can archive them. Archive means they're not in your inbox anymore, but they still exist on our server. So if you have some emails that you're not sure, like you don't want to delete them all the way, you might want to keep them, I would suggest archiving because at least it gets them out of your inbox and keeps it nice and clear for a fresh start. So let's stop this problem right now. Let's go to Google Classroom right now. Move this down here. When you get into Google Classroom, you're going to click those three lines at the top left corner, the menu, right? and scroll all the way down to the bottom to open your settings. Again, you can watch the GIF I created. Click on the three lines, 
scroll down to settings and it'll look like this. It'll have your profile. And if you scroll down a little bit, it'll come to notifications. So here are the settings in Google Classroom. The first thing, allow email notifications. You can turn that directly off if you want. But in my opinion, and in my past workings with Google Classroom, I would recommend leaving it on and just leaving on the three in the red box here because these are ones you may miss and they're really important. So looking there, you could see you'll receive an email if someone comments on your post. So if you post something on Google Classroom, unless you go in and check it every day, you won't know if someone has commented. Someone mentions you in a comment. Also really important. How else would you know unless you went in and checked every post and everything? And finally, the other one that's really important is private comments on your work. So a lot of times when a teacher is grading something, they'll leave you a comment and tell you how you did or maybe if you can redo it or just general feedback. If you don't have an email, you would have to go in and check every single time to see if there are comments there. Now, the ones that people like to turn off are all the ones underneath that classes you're enrolled in work and posts from teachers. That means you'll get an email every time your teacher posts something every time they post work. You may not want that. I know I don't um, return work grades, invitations to join a class, a due date reminder. All of those things are pretty optional in my in my book, just because I know that we go on and use Google Classroom quite often. Now, if you scroll down even further, you'll see uh, right where my picture is right now, um, the class notifications. Sometimes there are classes that you're in that you don't need to receive an email notification for. Or if a teacher hasn't archived your class, you may not wanna receive any emails from that class anymore. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna completely turn it off. Click on the blue button to turn it off altogether. They'll remain in the class, but you won't get any emails from that class. Just a reminder also, you have to do this at the beginning of each school year so that you don't, again, start getting all these notifications. Basically, we do it at the beginning of the school year because that's when all of our new classes start up. You may get added to a new class halfway through the year if you're taking a half year class. If that's the case, make sure you check your half year classes as well. So let's go back to our Gmail. Remember, to get to Gmail, you can either click the tab on top that says Gmail, or you can open a new tab, go into your waffle, and click Gmail. Some people like to personalize their inbox. For me, I like to have certain things just to make it work and run smoothly. What you're going to do is you're going to click on the little gear cog that is up next to the waffle in your inbox. When you do, you'll see some options pop up. The first option we're going to talk about is the density of your inbox. It's on default, which means you get to see who the email's from and any attachments. Comfortable means it doesn't show the little tile for the attachment, and compact means you get lots of emails in one small space. Personally, I use compact because I get lots of emails every day, but it's up to you what you want to use. Next, you'll see the theme. You can click on view all to see all the different options. You can change the background of your inbox. Maybe you want it to look like the beach. Maybe you want it to be a beautiful mountain scene. Whatever you want, you can click there. And the other thing you may want to look at is the inbox type. Now, for me personally, I keep mine unread first. So any unread emails I receive go right to the top of my inbox and they're there. If they're read, they still stay in my inbox, but they're at the bottom. It helps me organize my own. Lots of people like to use the default though. It's up to you, whatever you like. So I wanna talk about writing an email. To start, there are some tips that I wanna give you. First of all, you wanna use a subject. So that's kind of like what the people see when they receive the email. It's really nice to know what the email is gonna be about. Next, you're gonna to wanna to start with an appropriate greeting. So hello or dear Mrs. Collins, if it's an adult, you're going to want to use Mr., Mrs., Ms., Doctor, whatever their, whatever their title would be. And you want to keep it appropriate, obviously. If you're writing to a friend, you may just want to be like, hey, what's up? And that's okay, too. When you're writing emails, make sure you keep them short and to the point. Nobody likes reading an email that's four paragraphs long, unless you have that much information to share, which in that case, 
that's good. You want it to be that long. But for the most part, you want it to be short, to the point, and full of the information that you want to give. Next, just like when we used um, a Google Doc, you want to keep your font consistent. I'll show you how to change the font in just a minute. There are a few different options. And you want to write a simple closing. So thanks. Have a great day. See you soon. Sincerely, just like writing a letter. Finally, make sure you do a spell check. Nobody likes getting an email with all the words spelled incorrectly. Not to mention, that does make you look like maybe you don't know what you're talking about. And I'll show you how to get there. So let's look at the toolbar on the bottom. When you click that Compose button, you'll see the toolbar along the bottom. First, you have the A with the line under it. That is your text options. See where it says Sans Serif underneath? That's the different fonts. The T's are the size. You can do bold, italics, underline. You can change where the font goes to the left, to the right. There's bullets and numbers and all sorts of good stuff. Next, you can add emojis to your writing. So if it's between you and a friend, that would totally be appropriate. And finally, I wanted to show you where spell check is. Spell check is in the three dots on the right, and you can see it says check spelling. Now there are other options in your email. You can see the paper clip um, and the little Google Drive symbol. You can attach things to your emails. There's an image box. It's the square with the little mountains in it. You can add images in there. There are lots of different options, but these are the big three that I know people use the most. So what, what should you write, right? That's always everyone's question, what to write. If your teacher is going to allow you to write an email right now, a really nice thing to write is a thank you letter. Thank someone that is in the district that you appreciate and they've done something nice for you. So this could be a former teacher, it could be a friend, it could be your current teacher, it could be a friend in your class right now. It's really nice to be able to practice writing emails and everyone knows how good it feels to get a thank you note. So this is a great option for you if your teacher wants to do that today. All right, with that being said, if you have any questions about Gmail, please feel free to reach out to me, Mrs. Collins, and I hope everyone has a great day, and I look forward to seeing all of the progress we make. Have a good one.